This is so cool. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I have a really fun painting for you today. This is part four of my little space series. I hope you've been enjoying the series as much as I have. If you haven't caught the other three videos, you can find them in this playlist right here. But today's, this one is inspired by Olga Sobi and her Dancing Universe series that she did last year. So I was very much inspired way back when she was putting the videos out, but I'm always trying this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing, and I don't always get the chance to do everything that's exciting. So here it is. It's taken me months, and finally I'm getting around to trying it. But I have a 12 by 24 inch canvas, and I am doing the Earth and the Moon on a beautiful starry sky. And so funny side note, I watched nearly every video in her Dancing Universe series, except for the one where she did the Earth and the Moon. So this is actually not a direct copy of her painting video, though it's actually very similar. I watched it today and I was like, oh, that's almost exactly what I'm doing, but I'm, I promise I'm not copying it. I'm simply inspired by the other videos in her series. But I've got an embroidery hoop for my Earth. I think it's 12 inch. It might be 10 inches. It's either 10 or 12 inches. And then for my moon, I'm using a mason jar lid. This is a wide mouth mason jar lid. So that'll be my moon. Here are my colors. So these ones are going to be the ones for space. These are going to be the ones for earth. And these are going to be the ones for the moon. And if you want to see all of the details, they are down in my video description box. That way I don't have to talk through every single one, but you'll see the brands and the color details. And they're mixed with water. So these are tube paints, not craft paint, mixed with water, which is great for a Dutch pour. So let me see if I can show you the consistency here. It's very watery. It flows very well off the stick, keeps making, <laughs> making bubbles on the top, but it's, it's a very thin consistency. I think this will be a lot of fun and I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's make a painting. I'm going to start by tracing the shape of the earth and the shape of the moon. And then I'm going to paint them without the ring and then add the ring later. Let me start with the moon. So my moon colors. It's white, Payne's gray, uh, metallic pearlescence, and metallic silver. So Payne's gray is quite dark, but I think with the white and with the metallics, it's going to make some nice contrast there. Okay, this is small. Let me start with the hair dryer. I may end up blowing it by mouth. I've got paint on my hand. All right, let's blow this out. Oh, I love that. So it was this beautiful sort of blown out, but I didn't want it to look just plain. So I kind of blew it back and forth a little bit to make some more patterns. Let me give it a torch. Yeah, love that. On to the earth. So the earth, I've got a mix of blues, greens, and then some metallic, I think it's bronze, might be copper, I think it's bronze, and gold, just because I really want to make that beautiful you know, sort of the desert, the ocean, the land, and of course, white for clouds. So I'm going to start with some phthalo blue. And 
And then this is a blue mix. It was table scrapings from a previous pour. Let me add some white. I do want white up here at the top, kind of like the North Pole. So I want it to be prominent there. But just scattered throughout. Because if you look at pictures of the Earth from space, there's a lot of clouds that cover it. Okay, some greens now. So I've got sort of a dark green, which I'm going to put in a few areas. And then I'm going to layer this lighter green on top of that. That way, wherever there's green, there's a depth of color there. And then I want to add some of these kind of desert colors. And a couple of other spots. Not always desert, you know, just earth. And just a tiny bit of gold. Again, just to make it more interesting than just bronze. Okay, I am excited about this one. So let's blow this out. These are beautiful colors. I'm, I'm loving it a lot. There's a lot of paint on there. Uh, and there's not as much white as I would like. So I'm going to add in a little bit more white in a few areas. And just blow it out a little bit more. This North Pole area is not as easy to make as I wanted it to be. I think I'm finally happy with that. That that took some work. It's amazing when you're trying to make something realistic like the Earth. Like, we all know what the Earth is supposed to look like, but actually making it happen is really hard. Let me give it a little torch. So now before we add the background color, we need to put our little uh, rings back around our things. So there's the moon. And then I'm going to scrape away from the edge this extra paint. I'm just going to wipe up bit of the extra so it doesn't blend too much with our background color. And let's do the same for the earth. And I have a little cup to help prop it up on the side here. Okay. Beautiful. Excellent. Now, my light green color, 
Looks like it might be going just a little bit crazy in here. Um, could just be kind of as the paint settles that it's getting a little weird. So I'm just going to try and tweak it right now. Just finger paint style. And I will be coming back with a brush once it's dry and just touching up a few areas. So if anything looks particularly messy or distracting, I can fix it then. All right, time to add the space background. So I have two cups of black and I have some phthalo blue as well because I'd like to make sort of a three dimensional feel to space where it isn't all just solid black. So it's going to be mostly black though. And especially around the earth and the moon is going to be black. But then I want some of the phthalo blue just kind of swirling through. Now phthalo blue dries quite dark. So I think as it mixes with the black, I don't think you'll be able to see it a lot. But I want it in there just for fun. All right, let's do a little more black. I think that's going to be enough paint. I have a little bit more black if I need it. Well, let me torch really quick. So now I'm going to blow this background paint sort of around these rings that I've got and cover the canvas. Ooh, I like this a lot. Um, all right, let me torch again. And then I'm going to add, I have my metallic teal and metallic magenta. And I'm going to add just little bursts of that. And I'm going to blow out those sections just to add some sparkle to space. Okay, I think I like that. That way it's sort of movement this way and this way and up and around. So let's blow that out again. Wow, <laughs> this is really cool. This is really cool. Um, I want just a little bit more black here because the blue is very close to the earth. And I just, I want it to have a little bit more of a dark edge. This is so cool. Okay, last thing before I pull up these rings is to add some stars. So I've got my white paint and my fan brush. So I'm just going to dip it in here, get a little bit of paint and tap it. Oh, 
This is my favorite part. I mean, it was looking awesome anyway. But you add the stars, and the whole thing comes to life. I'm going to tap some stars along the sides as well. This part is always hard. I cannot even tell you guys how happy I am with this piece. Final step is to pick up the rings and uh, give you a close-up. So I'm going to start with the moon, and I'm going to try to do this really carefully. I'm going to use my right hand, because my left hand shakes a little bit. <laughs> it's splattered. That's okay. I will be touching this up with a brush. I knew that. So I'll either add black around the edge to make the moon a little bit smaller, or I'll add in some of the lighter colors to fill it out a little bit. It also looks like my, my sky color, the paint layer was thicker there than in the moon. So it's probably gonna push in just a little bit and warp the edges, but that's okay. Okay, let's do the earth. Oh, that one came up nice. Yeah, that was a very neat, very neat pull up. I love that. Love it. I love that it's like the North Pole up here. I can't tell. I think it looks kind of like Europe and Asia and a bit of the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know. It's, it's an abstract Earth for sure. But I think it pulls in all of those colors really nicely. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Let me give you a close up. Okay, here it is. This is spectacular, if I do say so myself. So let's start over here on the Earth. I like that we've got sort of the, the polar ice caps up there. And then a nice blend of coppers and greens and blues with some white, of course. So it's definitely an abstract Earth, and I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on it, but it very much looks like the Earth. And then over here we have the Moon, which is a nice blend also. And of course, the, it splattered outwards when I picked up that ring, but that will be very easy to touch up afterwards. But then the rest of this sky here is just these delicate wisps of the phthalo blue and the metallics. And of course, my camera is having a hard time focusing. It keeps wanting to correct and show that it's not actually this dark, but it is this dark and it's beautiful. So I just love all these wispies. It's, it's just magical. So I will show you how this looks when it is dry and we will do the brush touch-ups and see the finished piece. All right, see you then. Okay, now that the painting is dry and looking beautiful, it's time to reshape, especially the moon, but also the earth. It's gotten squashed just a little bit. So for the moon, I'm going to use this rather than my um, mason jar lid, just because it's a little easier to get the shape. So I'm going to trace a circle to show what my moon is actually going to be. So now I'm going to start touching it up with my same leftover paints from the pour. So white, silver, black, all of that to make a beautiful spherical moon shape.
Wow, it's amazing how much better it looks just by having it be a perfect circle. Once this white dries, I'll, I'll layer on some other of the metallics and the grays and stuff so it blends in more with the rest of the moon. But now I'm going to go start working on the earth. All right, so let's get this lined up how we need it. Okay, here it is all finished. Oh, I'm so happy with this. So, I started out by painting around the edge of the moon so that it's perfectly circular and filling in a few holes where necessary. And then also on the earth, I just made it perfectly circular. And then in a few of those places where I had to tweak the paint with my finger, it made those little star points and I didn't want lots of those star points so I just tweaked a little bit of that to um, to make it look more natural and flowing and then I added a little bit more white here around the edge to look like kind of swirling clouds or a bit of glow just on the side of the earth filled in this here where I needed to add some more water so I'm really happy with how the earth turned out. Look how shimmery that copper and gold or bronze and gold looks. I'm so glad that I put in some gold it just adds a whole lot. And then the background obviously our colors did darken which is what I wanted because I didn't want this bright purple space background but I wanted there to be just enough color and movement and shimmer that it would be a really interesting background to look at. But I also didn't want it to look like, you know, this crazy rainbow space. Um, and then I did some of the, some of the stars. I added a few more larger stars with a brush. There were a couple where I changed the shape. And then there were some where I left them because they looked like distant galaxies. You know, and I just thought, they have so much character right now, it really looks like something that if you look through a telescope, you'd see those kind of shapes. So I left some of them looking more kind of wonky. But I am totally in love with this piece. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one. I hope it inspired you to try something new. Let me know down in the comments, have you watched any of Olga Sobe's Dancing Universe paintings? And have you ever tried doing one like this for yourself? Definitely let me know if you are planning on doing one after watching this one. I hope that you have enjoyed this series as much as I have. Thanks so much for joining me on this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!